about an hour ago when I published this video here on the Panasonic GH6. The reason why it has a face palm and I say, what has Panasonic done? Is because we got a leaked price from a US store on the price of the GH6 and Four Thirds Rumors reported it. If the price was very quickly taken down, but the price in US dollars was $28.99. And that's the reason I put the face palm. I thought this price goes way beyond what we'd expect to see from a Panasonic GH6. In fact, I thought that the price would probably fall between $19.99 and $24.99. $19.99, if Panasonic really wants to surprise the market and come in cheap, pull something out of Sony's strategy of pricing low, or come in at $24.99 saying, look, we've got an incredible set of specifications here. This camera is worth $24.99, and I think they could have sold the story. I myself believed we were going to see a price of between $21 and $22.99, as I've said in many videos. And that's really where I thought it was going to be. So when Four Thirds Rumors came out and said, look, we've got a leaked price from a US store, they quickly took the price down. I thought one of two things, this is going to be the price and wow, Panasonic has really missed the mark here. The other option was, well, this was just a placeholder they, this store put in prior to the release. But we're getting an announcement in just a few days, so I thought that's a little bit less likely. This could very well be the price. And what was interesting, in the comments, I got some really interesting comments. Some people thought, wait, this price is way too high. Others thought this price is perfect. It's good value for the money. But I thought, while it works for those of you that currently own a GH5 or other Panasonic gear, for somebody they're trying to attract into the market, putting the price this high says, okay, I'm going to look at the GH6, but I'm also going to look at all these other full frame mirrorless cameras like the A7S III, the R6, the A7 IV, and even the Z6. Well, I've got really good news for you. For those of you that thought the price was perfect and that this is going to be a good price and you're happy with it, it's well worth the features, you're going to be really excited because that price is correct. It is $28.99, but here's the good news for those of you that thought that was overpriced. That is a Canadian price. It wasn't from a U.S. store. It was from a Canadian store, and it's going to sell in Canada for $28.99 once it's announced. So what is it going to cost in U.S. dollars? Well, living in Canada, I'm very well versed in how we take a U.S. price and convert it to Canadian and vice versa. Apple, Panasonic, Canon, everybody pretty well does the same thing. They look at the current spot price on the exchange rate. So, for example, right now the Canadian dollar is worth $78.40 against the U.S. dollar. Then they look at some trending. Okay, where do they expect the Canadian dollar to go in the next six months to a year? Is it stable? And quite often what they'll do is, so for example, at 7840, they think, well, everybody consensus is more or less saying it's going to go up to 80 cents. But sometimes what they'll do is they'll say, okay, well, it's going to go up to 80. Let's peg it based on the current spot price, which was 7840. Or they might price it down a little. And this is what Apple will do. Apple would base it on a price of around 75 cents. So for this argument, I'm going to take the spot price of 7840. And that gives us a U.S. price of 2272. That looks a whole lot better. Now, marketing wouldn't do that. They would come out with a price of like $22.99. So most likely the price of the Panasonic GH6 in US dollars is going to be $22.99, although there is a chance it could be $21.99. So I'll say there's a 25% chance it'll be $21.99 and a 75% chance it's going to be $22.99. And this, I think, is great news. So let's address some of the comments because I was really surprised by some of them. The first 10 or so comments coming in said the price is perfect uh, or, you know, based on what this camera offers in value, I think it's well worth the price. These comments I found to be the strangest comments. And this is not surprising when the Canon R5, when I was covering the Canon R5 and we were getting rumors of pricing being around $8,000, $9,000. I said, no way, this is ridiculous. Look at history. Basically what Canon's gonna do is they're gonna look at the 5D Mark IV, take inflation of 2% a year, and we're gonna have a price of somewhere under $4,000, and that's what happened. And it's the same with the Panasonic GH6. I couldn't really see them going to $2899 US. It, just, it was such a huge jump. It didn't make sense to me. And as a fan of Panasonic, and you've got a reason to be a fan, they put a lot into their cameras. But don't advertise the price is perfect because they're listening. They'll see this. And if enough people say, wow, this $28.99 US was a really good price. We're happy with it. Then the next time they go to price things, they're going to be a little bit less aggressive. They'll put a slightly higher price in. So even if you think the price is fine, go, 
publicly, no, this price isn't very good. But for those of you that thought, yeah, this is way too high, I agree. I think it was way too high based on historic pricing and even with the current economic situation. So the good news is the price is going to be no more than $22.99 US dollars. And these kind of mistakes do happen. I think Four Thirds Rumors has done an impeccable job of covering the OM1 this year. They've done an impeccable job of covering the GH6. I mean, they've nailed pretty well everything. And it's very easy to mix and match Canadian stores versus US stores. We have the same currency denomination, the dollar, and it's the same symbol. So if it doesn't say the store name like Henry's or Downtown Camera, London Drugs, or anything like that, and you just see a dollar sign and you don't notice a difference in spelling because here in Canada we do spell things differently. Color is O-U-R instead of O-R. Somebody like myself who's Canadian can look at the spelling and I can very quickly determine, okay, based on the spelling, I know this is not from the US. It's most likely Canada or England or somewhere else. And then based on the other language, I could very easily differentiate between Canadian and US. But I understand this mistake. And the reason why I'm doing another video is because I didn't want to let that other video stand. I didn't want to alienate people that were looking at buying the Panasonic GH6. I didn't want to push people away from buying the GH6 that were happy with getting it at a lower price point. I didn't want to do damage to the market because while I published that video based on known information at the time and was correct, letting it stand wouldn't be correct. But at the same time, I'm not going to delete that video either because in relation to this video, it's not going to make sense. But what will happen, because I'm using the same keywords from the first video in this one, very quickly, that video isn't going to be found. But if you want to know what I was talking about in the other video, you can certainly go and watch it. But, but it, covering rumors, covering news, isn't something that's always easy to do. And sometimes mistakes are made. But as I said in the last video, we just have a few days to wait. The 21st is just a couple of days away, despite what you've heard, terms on pricing, specifications. And yes, we've gotten, I believe the specifications are leaked at 100%. And yes, we've seen videos or screenshots from every angle of this camera, and we've seen some Japanese reviews. But again, this is still one viewpoint into the camera. Let's wait until Monday. Let's wait till we get some of the reviews, such as Jordan from DP Review, um, Gordon Lang, and others, and let's see what they have to say about this camera. And it'll help give us a much better idea of what these specifications means in terms of the outcomes you want to achieve. But I think it's pretty safe to say that if you really do like the GH5, and yes, Jesse, I am talking to you. Uh, but many others, if you like the GH5, then I can't imagine getting the GH6 isn't a really good idea. If you're really happy with the GH5, I think the GH6 is just going to make you so much more happier. I am truly impressed with everything that this camera has. Simple little things such as a full-size HDMI slot, the addition of a CF Express Type B card slot, so you can use much faster, much bigger storage at a much more affordable price. These new video modes and refresh rates or resolutions and uh, frame rates, it's just really amazing. And to be able to get Apple ProRes at 1.9 gigabits per second is truly an amazing camera. For those of you that are still on the fence, it doesn't hurt to wait. Now, if you want to go ahead and pre-order on Monday, I would go ahead and do so. It, if, if you wait a long time, then most likely it could take months before you get it. And even if you do pre-order Monday, it's very unlikely you're going to get it right away. So go ahead and pre-order it. Watch the videos. Do some hanging, hawing, deciding whether this is right for you or not. Because you can always cancel your pre-order later. But, wow. Well, this is turning out to be very exciting. I thought OM1's coverage was exciting. But the GH6, on Saturday I've got two videos when all I wanted to do is relax and go frolicking in the snow. But one last thing before I go, as the GH6 is going to be taking CF Express cards, I have a contest for you where you could help reduce the price of your GH6 even further. You could win a 512 gigabyte AV Pro SE, that's an Angelbird CF Express card type B, perfect for the GH6, that can record, that can record in every video mode, including Apple ProRes at 1.9 gigabits per second. This has a minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second. It's one of the market leaders in terms of storage for video and photo uh, for creatives. 800 megabytes per second, whether the card is almost full or completely empty. That allows for 8K30, 8K60, raw on the Nikon Z9, on the R5C, the R5. 
it's 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 a it's very very fast and i've got three cards to give away uh, one is a 160 gigabyte, which has got a minimum sustained write speed of 1480 megabytes per second. But this is more for cameras like the Z7, the Z9, the R3, where it's more about getting that fast shutter speed for stills. This will allow you to shoot at 20 frames per second at 45 megapixels, lossless burst on the Z9, um, 1480 megabytes per second. That's 1.5 megabytes per second. Really, really fast. So um, whoever wins at the end of the month, you get a choice of the 160 or the 512 gig. And here's all you have to do to enter. Subscribe to this channel. That's it. You need to have a mailing address somewhere on the planet. And you have to be at least 18 years of age to be able to win. And I'll be announcing it early March. So um, yeah, I, no, I'm really excited by the G86. Uh, having that CF Express card, I got to tell you, that's to me actually one of the most exciting things because when you shoot, especially in those higher frame rates, trying to get it off the card, especially on, you know, those SD cards, and even a V90 card, if you look at the price of the 512 gigabyte AV Pro SE, it's actually less than a price of a 120 or 256 gig V90 card. Uh, they're, they're very, very cheap and much faster. Read speed of 1,785 megabytes per second. And these are fast enough that I actually transcode while it's still, the content is still on the actual card. And the 160 gig, I actually have a much larger version of this, uh, the four terabyte where I actually edit. I do all my editing right on the CF Express card. It's that fast, that reliable, that durable. But anyhow, I've talked for enough now. I wanna get upstairs and edit this and then I wanna enjoy the rest of my weekend. So I hope this brings good news to you. The price of the Panasonic GH6 isn't going to cost any more than US dollars, $22.99.99. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.